Hey everyone, it's Ashley Cannon Newell here with another Make It Monday video. Today I'll be sharing tips and tricks on how I like to stamp on pattern paper. Here's one way, basically, to enhance the pattern paper itself using background stamps. This card also shows another way, just to add a sentiment. And for the last card, I show how to stamp on pattern paper with a background stamp like a label, a sentiment, and a die cut. So let's go ahead and get started. I have here Road Trip Pattern Paper Collection, and I'm using this particular paper, and I've cut it to about a four inch square. I'm gonna make it about a four and a quarter, or four and a half inch square card. Okay, I have Road Trip stamp set here, and I'm gonna be using the outline, negative like outline of the map of the United States here. And I'm just gonna put it on my acrylic block. And I'm gonna ink it up here with some dark chocolate ink. Okay, I like to stamp off first on a scrap piece of paper before I first initially stamp on a project directly. And this lets me know whether the stamp is going to take the ink well. So now that I have that stamp already done, I'm gonna take the little star stamp here and I'm gonna add it to my map. I'm gonna take some Pure Poppy ink to use for my star to indicate exactly where I want to pinpoint the area on this US map here. And you kinda of have to know your geology a little bit, right? To know where to place things. So I'm gonna place it somewhere right in here. The New England or the Mid-Atlantic states are kind of hard because they're clustered together, they're really small. All right, so I have a sentiment stamp also from Road Trip. And I'm just gonna put it on my acrylic block. This one says, wish you were here, in case you can't see it directly on the video. It's clear and a lot of bright, so. I'm just gonna get my placement together to make sure it fits right inside of that empty area of the map. And I'm gonna be using true black ink. And so people like to say, well, you don't really wanna mix black and brown, but I think you can, so go for it. All right, so I'm just going to stamp that sentiment right in the center there. And I have the postage stamp, again from Road Trip stamp set. And I'm gonna use that Pure Poppy ink again stamp off on my scrap paper. And then I'm just gonna stamp it kind of messy like, I don't want it to be exactly perfect on here. All right, and for the last stamp on this one, I'm going to be using the postmark stamp here. I'm just gonna stamp it on dark chocolate ink, stamp off. But I'm stamping off and I'm gonna stamp again because I want it to be a very fair watermark type looking. But you can see it here. Okay, now that I have all my stamping done on pattern paper, I'm going to go ahead and assemble my card. I have this matte paper is from the Road Trip pattern paper collection as well. And as you saw, I did all of my stamping directly on that pattern paper. The trick is, is to pick subtle patterns so that the images or the sentiments and the shapes will stand out and not get lost too much in that pattern paper design. So that's why I used that negative die cut at US map stamp because that brown ink would go well over that fine linen paper there. And um, also that pure poppy goes well over it. All right, I'm taking my pencil, making a couple marks here, and I'm gonna take my crop a dial and punch, punch holes where I marked it with my pencil. And I just eyeballed where I wanted it. And the reason why I'm doing this is because I'm going to set a couple eyelets here into those holes. So I'm just getting my eyelets out. And this is just a little way you can add a little bit of hardware to your cards. But as I was saying about stamping on pattern paper, you want to stamp on something that shows. So um, I didn't want to use ink colors that would blend in with that fine linen ink which is on that pattern paper. So I wanted to use inks that stand out. I used the black, the brown, and the pure poppy. Even when I stamped off on the brown, it still shows through on that postmark part. 
Okay, so on my next step, I'm taking some jute twine here. I'm doubling it up. So I have two ends on one side and it's doubled up. And I'm gonna go ahead and thread it through the eyelet one side. I'm starting on the left, I think. Just gonna thread it through this, this hole first. Pull it through a little bit. And then I'm taking the other end, which is the looped end. You can trim it, you make it tails if you want. Um, but I'm just gonna thread it through. And I'm just going to tie a bow. Very simple way to add texture, hardware, to just a flat stamped card. But a lot of texture and patterns because I stamped on that pattern paper. Alright, so I'm just going to play with my twine a little bit to get my bow right. And then I'm just going to go ahead and take my scissors and snip the tails and when I snip the tails I don't snip them both at the same time one's a little bit longer one's a little bit shorter this gives a little bit of variety and makes it so it's not um, makes it look the imperfection of it makes it look real to me so I like to keep it that way so again playing with my bows a little bit and for my last step I'm going to take craft card base it's about four and a half inch all around square card and I'm just going to go ahead and put some adhesive on the back here just to cure it to my card front all right and now that this is all secured there's my finished card and this is a complete card Pretty much one layer. I mean, yeah, it has a couple layers of pattern paper on that card front, but it's stamped on one layer, and you get still a lot of dimension and depth because of the road trip pattern paper, that matte background, the map, and the postage, and also the, the twine treatment there. Okay, so moving on to my next card, I have your four of a kind. Um, this stamp set is one of the, uh, I believe it's one of the CHA, uh, CHA's paper tray ink went to. This is Sugar Plum Collection. I'm using this pattern paper here, the diamonds, and it's fresh linen, as, I'm sorry, it's fine linen as well. Again, four of a kind. And I'm going to be showing how you stamp a pattern to enhance the pattern on the actual pattern paper. So I could stamp flowers on this, um, and enhance it and it's because I'm it's because of two reasons the fine linen color on the pattern paper as well as the subtle diamonds which is white onto that pattern paper and I'm using ripe avocado ink as my flower color for the stems and leaves and this is a lot darker deeper richer color than fine linen which would allow it to stand out and pop and not get lost into that diamond pattern of this sugar plum pattern paper. So this is definitely a way you can enhance that pattern paper and use it in more ways than just adding it to a design and then layering over top of it. Okay, so now I'm gonna take this little rosebud stamp, again, from the same stamp collection, and I'm just going to go ahead and add it to my acrylic block and use Berry Sorbet ink. Okay, so this stamp set is really easy to work with, as you can see. Um, it's a stamp building type where you have the colors that stand out from the leaves, and you can easily line it up at each bud or stem. And again, I'm using a color that will stand out on that fine linen pattern paper there. And that berry sorbet that coral berry color really pops as you can see, but you can still definitely see that diamond and fine linen print throughout. 
So you're getting the best of both worlds of using pattern paper and enhancing it with your stamps to make your own custom pattern paper appearing design. So now I'm going to show how you can just use the sentiments and stamp it on pattern paper. So for instance, if you had come up with a design where you didn't stamp the actual flower pattern on there, you can just simply just stamp a sentiment as well. So I'm just going to show now how I'm going to line the sentiment up. So I'm going to use my, my grid mat here as a guide and then to line it up and put it all in one block. Makes it a little bit easier to stamp it all at once. Um, sometimes I stamp each word separately or individually. It just depends if I can line them up or not. When I'm stamping, I'm using some dark chocolate ink. I'm just going to stamp it along the left side. And that pretty much is it. All of my stamping is done. So to finish off the card, I'm going to add a little bit of lemon tart twill tape ribbon. I'm just going to tie it into a bow to divide the line between the stamped floral pattern from the actual sentiment. Basically another one layer card to a certain degree because I'm going to add this to a card front but not a lot of layers here. Very clean and simple type of design and very quick and easy to create. So I'm going to play with my ribbon a little bit until I get my bow. My bow's just right. I have to fluff them up and play with the tails a little bit and also have to make sure that the knot is tight enough that it, the ribbon's not going to fall off that card, that paper right there. All right, now that I have that all tight fixed, I'm just going to go ahead and take my scissors and trim the tails at an angle. And trimming the tails at an angle really allows it so that it's, the ribbon will not fringe as much. You won't get as much fringe. You still can if you play with it, but you won't get as much as if you would cut it straight. All right, so if your ribbon pops up a little bit, here's a little trick. You can use a little bit of adhesive or like a glue dot. I'm just gonna add a little bit of a glue dot under mine. Um, you could also use score tape. Um, just add just a little bit under the ribbon where it is going to be, and it kind of secures it in its place so it doesn't slide up and down or move about. So sometimes I know the ribbon, you really wanna make sure it stays in place, and that's definitely a way you can ensure that. So to finish off the card, I'm just going to go ahead and take this ripe avocado paper cardstock and add adhesive to my stamped pattern paper back here. And this is just a regular A2 card base that I'm using. So it's just four and a quarter by five and a half. I'm just going to adhere it right to the front. And that's this card with my pattern paper that's enhanced with a floral stamped pattern and a stamped sentiment. Very simple but very effective. Okay, so for this particular card I'm going to be using Pretty Pastels. I'm going to be using that blue color here. It's like aqua mist with a diamond pattern on it. Again, very subtle pattern. I already have a little bit cut out because I'm going to be using this die cut here from Pretty Peonies and the coordinating label stamp. Alright, so now that it's on my block, I'm going to go ahead and take some True Black ink. There it is. 
and ink up my stamp. And again, if it's a new stamp or even if I haven't stamped with it on this particular project, I always stamp off first on scrap paper. It's just a way to know, first of all, that it's going to look right on my project that I'm actually working on. All right, so there is my die cut, all stamped with a label on the pattern paper. And now I'm going to take a sentiment from embellishments. And I'm going to pick the one that says, you inspire me. Stamped off. And now I'm coming back to ink up again and stamp on my project. And there's my label, all die cut and stamped on the pattern paper. Very beautiful results. All right, so to finish off this card, I'm gonna be taking the polka dotted spring moss pattern paper I have here cut and it's cut to about four inches by five and a quarter inches. And I'm gonna be taking here, let's see, matte stack one die, and I'm a, and I have a die cut here from Hawaiian Shores cardstock. So I'm just going to basically layer the Pretty Peonies label die onto that matte stack one die cut. So I'm going to take some foam adhesive and place it on the back of that Pretty Peonies die cut, and just basically add it to the matte stack one die cut. And as opposed to wasting some of these adhesives, I just cut a little bit out, remove the backing, and then just adhere it right on the back. And you get a little bit more foam adhesive out of that. All right, set that down. And I'm gonna be using the flourish here and embellishments. And I'm gonna stamp on that polka dotted pattern paper with the true black ink. And the reason why I assembled my layered die cuts together first because I wanted to have an idea of where I needed to stamp onto the pattern paper so it would peek out from those labels how I want it to. So I'm not going to stamp on them. Be very careful here not to drop my block. I kind of want it up here a little bit. So I'm going to move my label and then stamp. Okay, and see how it's going to look with a little bit of a flourish popping out. I'm going to do the same thing. Flip my stamp around so that flourish peeps out from the bottom and stamp. And add that little flourish flare to that polka dotted pattern paper and you've customized it to a whole different level. All right, so now I have some pure poppy grain ribbon and I'm just going to add that to the center of this pattern paper underneath of the layered die cut. And I wasn't gonna cut this, but it looks like I'm all out. Don't you hate it when you get to that stage when you're all out of your ribbon? So it looks like I have an order coming on soon. Get me some more supplies for my stash. Okay, so I'm just going to tie my ribbon into a bow. And when I tie my ribbon, I don't really make sure that it's placed in the exact area when it's something like this, because I can always slide it and move it around. So. I just get it on there and then I can maneuver it a little bit later, whether it's top, bottom, left, right, side to side.
thing about tying ribbons, making them into pretty bows, is you just have to play with them a little bit. And the more you do it, the faster you'll get and the easier it'll be. So just play with them a lot. Fluff them up. I use my fingers just to push them up a little bit so they're not so flat. But that's a personal preference, so. All right, again, trimming my tails at an angle so that they won't fray on the ends. And see, you can even assemble the card landscape style and it would work as well. But I'm gonna do it portrait. Cause that's kind of how I envisioned it in my head. And I'm gonna use a little bit more of this foam adhesive to adhere that layered die cut down. Cut them up a little bit into little sections. And just add a couple on the back. Remove the backing and then we're ready to go ahead and adhere to our pattern paper right to the center there. Make sure my ribbon's in the right place because once this is secured down, it's kind of difficult to move it after the fact. Okay, I have some rustic white cardstock again cut into an A2 card base. I'm just going to go ahead and add my adhesive directly onto the card front. Um, simply because I don't want to smush my ribbon now that I fluffed it up so much. And as long as I have my adhesive more so quarter inch on the inside, I know I'm good to go. So I'm just going to adhere this right here onto the front. And I am pretty much done with this card. So on this particular design, I added a sentiment to pattern paper, stamped a label and die cut it, the pattern paper, and also stamped directly onto pattern paper to enhance the design. So those are all of the cards here. You can do enhanced pattern paper with stamping backgrounds and such, or just simply add a sentiment. It's all up to you. So things to keep in mind, pick eight colors that uh, don't compete with your pattern paper. Pick subtle pattern paper palettes and have fun. Thanks so much for watching for Paper Tray Ink. It's Make It Monday. Bye.